In Python and other object-oriented languages, a variable is a reference to its value. Box and pointer diagrams are a standard way to explain this idea and its consequences in a visual form. A box and pointer diagram displays a snapshot of the variables and their values at a given point of execution of a program. So for example, the three lines of code shown here yield the box and pointer diagram shown on the right, as we'll see in the rest of this video. So this video will show you how to read and draw box and pointer diagrams. They help clarify that variables are references to objects. So Professor Jones over on the right will perhaps not be as confused after this video about what a pointer is. They also help clarify that assignment causes a variable to refer to an object and that function calls do the same. Recall that in Python, every piece of data is an object. Objects have a type and a value. Names, that is variables, are references to objects. We say that the name refers to an object or points to an object or is the name of an object. Three ways to say the same thing in this context. So for example, we might have radius refer to the integer 42. The variable temperature might refer to the floating point number minus 8.56. The variable greeting might refer to the string hello. The variable numbers might refer to what's called a list. And the variable circle one might refer to an RG circle. Again, variables refer to objects. Some objects themselves contain references to other objects. We call such objects container objects. For example, the string hello here contains references to its characters, H-E-L-L-O. A list like the one here contains references to the items in the list. And a circle contains references to its radius, its center, its fill color, and other data. Those are all container objects. Okay, now let's see how to draw a box and pointer diagram. There are four rules, the first of which is to draw a non-container object by putting its value inside a box. So for example, the number 48 would be placed in a box, as would the floating point number 10.13, the character H, and the keywords true and none. Rule two, draw a variable using a box labeled with the variable's name and with arrows from the box to the object to which the variable currently refers. So for example, if we have a variable x that's been assigned a value 48, the box and pointer diagram would first have a box, then beside it, the variable x, then an arrow from that box to the object 48 that we've already got a box for via rule one. So for non-container objects, we simply put their value inside a box. For variables, we draw a box, label the box uh, with the variable's name beside it, and then draw an arrow from the box to the object that that variable refers to. The third rule is how to draw a container object. You do so by making a box for it, and then creating sub-boxes that are drawn as if they were variables, but with names for the instance variables of an object and indices for items of a sequence. We haven't talked about sequences yet, but you'll get the idea just from the picture. So for example, when the right-hand side of the second of our three lines of code runs, a container object, the point, is constructed. So we draw a box for the whole point, and then sub-boxes for each of its instance variables. We treat each sub-box as if it was a box for a variable. So we put the instance variable x beside one of them, the instance variable y beside another. If the picture were more complete, we'd have a box for the fill color with fill color listed underneath the box. And then each of those sub boxes has arrows to the values for those sub boxes. So x refers to a non-container object, 100, y refers to the non-container object, 150, and so forth. Sequences are also container objects. We'll be talking about them soon, but you can already get the idea that a sequence has a beginning one, a second one, another one, and they're just labeled with numbers, 0, 1, 2, etc., with arrows drawn from each of those labels to the uh, object to which they refer. Our fourth and final rule deals with when a variable is reassigned, as in the example here. When code reassigns a variable, you evaluate the expression on the right-hand side, as always, and if it's a new object, you draw a box for it. 
So for example, when the line of code x gets x plus 3 runs, the right hand side looks up the value of x, namely 48, and adds 3 to it to get 51. That's a new object, so we put a box for 51. Then, continuing the rule here, you cross through the existing arrow from the variable. So x used to refer to 48, we cross through that arrow. And then finally we draw a new arrow from the variable to the new object, the one that the uh, right hand side evaluated to. So we draw an arrow from x to that 51. Note that arrows always go from a variable's box to an object's box. The same rule applies to the line of code p.y gets 22. We start by evaluating the right hand side. It's 22, don't have a box for it, so we make a new one. Cross through the uh, arrow, the old arrow, from y to the value that it used to refer to, 150, and then make a new arrow from p's y to the new box, 22. It's important to note that arrows always go from a variable's box to an object's box. So for example, when we're doing the last line of code shown above, z gets x, we apply the same rule. We evaluate the right-hand side x, it evaluates to 51. So we then go to the left-hand side. We don't have a box for it, so we make a, a, a box. It's a new variable. We make a box. We put z beside the box. We draw an arrow from the box, just like we did with all other assignments, and it goes to the thing that we just evaluated, the box containing 51. Never have an arrow go from a variable's box to another variable's box. So in summary, I've shown you how to draw and read a box and pointer diagram. They're helpful for a lot of reasons, including the fact that it clarifies for Professor Jones and others how exactly a reference or a pointer works. There were four rules. The first was that for a non-container object, you just put its value inside a box. The second said how to draw variables, that you draw a box for the variable, put the variable's name beside the box, and then have an arrow going from the box to the object to which the variable refers. So for example, the variable x refers to the object 48, so we have an arrow from x to 48. Rule 3 was that we draw a container object. Remember, rule 1 was non-container objects. Rule 3 is that we draw a container object by making a box for it and then doing subboxes and doing the same thing for the subboxes that rules 1 and 2 said to do with variables. So for example, if we construct a point, that's a container object, so we make subboxes for all its instance variables, x, y, fill color, whatever. And for each of those subboxes, we treat it like a variable. That is, we put the name of the instance variable beside the box, and then we draw an arrow from the box to the object to which the variable refers. Here, for example, p's x refers to 100. Our fourth and last rule addressed the situation where code reassigns a variable. In that case, you evaluate the right-hand side of the expression as always with an assignment. If it's a new object, you draw a box for it. You cross through the existing arrow from the variable, because that's what it used to refer to, and you draw a new arrow from the variable to the object to which the right-hand side evaluated. That's our way to show visually that the variable refers to a different object than what it previously did. That's what an assignment does. It changes the arrow. Keep in mind that rule assignment changes arrows, and that arrows always go from a variable's box to an object's box, and you'll do well. Box and pointer diagrams show what it means for a variable to refer to an object. They're useful for all sorts of reasons. You're going to draw some box and pointer diagrams. When you do so, simply keep these four rules in mind, and you'll do fine.